friends it's my pleasure to welcome you for, for the course on high voltage engineering myself ravindra arora and my colleague uh, dr bharat singh rajpurohit have together prepared it we have also written a book which is there in the reference you can always consult the book which was published uh, last year i have earlier books but the, the latest one is published together by both of us last year first of all i would like to apprise you about what is high voltage engineering there are a lot of misconceptions about what is high voltage engineering high voltage engineering is nothing but the investigation of the behavior of electrical insulation dielectrics we also call it how do they behave under different conditions of electric field how do they behave under different conditions of pollution or when there is some foreign particle in it etc electrical insulations you would be aware the most widely used electrical insulation in the world is the atmospheric air and that's the cheapest possible available if you see the transmission lines what is the insulation between you and the high voltage conductor is this nothing but the air and then we have uh, liquid insulation the yeah, liquid uh, transformer oils mineral oils there are some other uh, oils also there then we have solid insulation uh, that may be paper or plastic material or porcelain or glass or n number of solid insulation and sometimes in an apparatus there may be number of insulation systems or number of insulation which make the total insulation of the apparatus and how do they behave the i mean to say the insulation of the dielectrics under different voltage conditions under different electrode configuration that is electric field configuration when they are affected by the atmosphere etc and that investigation and that knowledge is nothing but high voltage engineering obviously when you produce a, uh, a, a an apparatus you do want to test it whether your insulation system provided to the apparatus is working all right or not and that uh, for um, testing the apparatus we need high voltage laboratories we need equipment with which we test the uh, apparatus measurement measuring ins instruments etc and that is all done in uh, high voltage laboratories so that becomes the high, high voltage laboratory techniques are uh, involved we will also cover about that first of all i would like to uh, uh, go to the uh, next uh, slide the high voltage high voltage uh, i talked about the importance of high voltage uh, then we need why do we need higher voltage you know that uh the power rating w a real power is nothing but v into i if we consider the cos uh, phi or the power factor to be uh, ideally uniform i'm i'm say ideally one so it is v into i so if you want to increase the power rating of any apparatus or installation what do we need to do 
we cannot increase the magnitude of the current indefinitely. But we have, you can say, been able to increase the magnitude of the voltage practically indefinitely. Some hundred years back, or more than hundred years back, it was thought 110 kV will be the highest transmission voltage. But we do have today in the world 1150 kV transmission voltage. In the past 50 years, the deep power systems has taken place. It is not in a, nothing but because of the high voltage availability application uh, and uh, that is how we are able to handle very large demand of power. We are able to generate the power, transmit the power and bring it to the consumer by what we call it to be distribution. We, let's, uh, mm, uh, we'll be also talking about the voltage levels all over the world and the power consumption levels, uh, etc. But let's talk about one very important aspect and that is uh, the importance of high voltage insulation design and testing. Uh, I think I've talked about it. Uh, if you uh, see the slide, the, 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 as I just now mentioned, power generation, then the power has to be sometimes transmitted to long distances because the, the distance between the generating stations and the, uh, and the load uh, need not be uh, um, very close. They are often very, very long. And then we need uh, high, uh, we need larger machines to be installed when we have uh, in the generation in generating stations. Earlier we used to have even five megawatt was considered to be a big machine, five and ten megawatt. But today, six hundred and fifty megawatt generators are being um, produced in our country and the level of voltage at which this power is produced in the machine that is synchronous generator we call it is at 22 kV only. Then we, uh, uh, we would like to increase the voltage but there are constraints in the machine to go for higher voltage. You can imagine when it is 650 megawatt at 22 kV, the magnitude of the current would be very, very large. We'll calculate it, okay? And then the from 22 kV at the generating stations, the, uh, the power is, uh, uh, the, the voltage at which it is being generated, that may be 11 kV or 22 kV is, uh, uh, enhanced, it is uh, uh, stepped up for transmission purpose because for transmission at 22 kV it is not advisable. We'll see how it is. Uh, it may have a lot of uh, losses because the current will be high, etc. So for transmission we need higher voltages, and for transmission, as I mentioned, uh, we have in the world gone to 1150 kV. In India, we have gone to uh, 800 kV AC and plus minus 800 kV DC also. And uh, but, however, the distribution when you can imagine the power is uh, consumed only at 220 or 230 volts, and it has to be then. Uh, step down and then distribute it accordingly uh, the, the, the power. So that distribution system is also very elaborate, very uh, is in one way you can say very complicated and uh, so, so that you can provide the quality of power 
that is the voltage and uh, the main thing is there the voltage and the frequency uh, to the consumer at the um, designated level of 230 volts most of the loads in our country are single phase 230 volts supplied by uh, 400 uh, about 420 or 30 uh, volts three phase systems the whole all the things together that is generation transmission and distribution systems they are interconnected so to say they are interconnected today in our country throughout the country from north to south and from east to west what do we call this interconnected power supply system power supply system that means it is generation transmission and distribution comprises of all the three a power grid so how would you define a power grid in fact when the uh, distributed generation takes place the, the generation of power is always distributed because the sources of power that is uh, you can say you can um, classify also uh, so in the in the recent past the coal was the main source of power we have in india uh, coal belts near Singaroli, for example, and there are a number of thermal power stations there. Then we have a lot of potential for hydroelectric uh, in, in the Himalayan region, otherwise also. Then wherever the hydroelectric, uh, hydro, uh, you can say the waterhead is available, the hydroelectric plants are constructed. So the generating stations are distributed all over the country. The uh, recent the trend, I mean, the, uh, not very recent, uh, in the last 25 years, this renewable sources of energy, that is the solar power and uh, the wind power, they have been integrated also to the power grid. Solar power are available, um, the, the best place where the highest intensity of uh, solar light is available that is PV panels are installed that is near that is in Rajasthan and around wind power <coughs> are installed near the coastal areas so there all these sources of power are distributed all throughout the country and for example solar power is available in this in the daytime then wind power may be available anytime and hydropower we you can keep a reserve if you don't run the turbine the waterhead is there and the thermal power stations unfortunately do not have that flexibility they run at continuously at a certain level of generation of the electrical power so the best way to have economic conditions for the generation, distribution and utilization is to have a power grid. In India, we have five uh, regional uh, grids. For example, the northern region, the northeastern region, eastern region, western region, and southern region. So five regional grids are there and over the time all these five regional grids have been interconnected. This that has given rise to a national grid and the dispatch center for the national grid is of course in the uh, more uh, where the power is handled uh, more that is uh, near Delhi. So uh, all the regional grids are in continuous touch with the uh, national power grid and that is how the power is uh, 
controlled the, uh, and uh, brought to the user in its best quality. <clears throat> what is the advantage of uh, uh, Power Grid? The foremost advantage is that secured and reliable power supply. Secured and power uh, reliable power supply means uh, when I've talked about uh, this slide already. I uh, yeah yeah. This is the typical sketch of the power grid, as you can see the district uh, the. the uh, generating stations are connected with the help of transmission lines. Uh, all generating stations are connected to one system, as you can see on this sketch. And uh, these uh, uh, form a power grid. So, how, how can you define the power grid? As you see in this diagram, you can define the power grid with a very simple definition that is interconnected gener interconnected generating stations make it a grid a power grid is nothing but an interconnection of all generating power generating stations and as i mentioned some of the uh, generating stations may have you know, generation at 11 kv some maybe at 22 kv some then they are stepped up with a transmission line at 220 kV or 400 kV or 800 kV AC. They also step uh, the transmission line may also have voltages like plus minus or only uh, monopolar DC or bipolar DC plus minus 800 plus minus 500 we have in our country and that is how they are interconnected and the power um, is brought near to the load centers the load centers are in the big cities the biggest load center in the country is uh, nothing but the uh, national capital region and all cosmopolitan cities like bombay calcutta bangalore hyderabad they also consume very large amount of power but the generation takes takes place at at power distance and with the help of the power grid the power is brought there yeah let's come back to the advantage of power suppose uh, there is some fault in one of the power generating stations under this condition the power can be diverted from other generating stations to the load near to the uh, gen uh, near to the generating station which has uh, which might have been uh, taken out of the circuit because of the fault conditions so you can say diversion of power diversion of power is also important for example in the uh, evening hours solar power is not available so we can keep the hydroelectric power as the water head in reserve and uh, put on the hydroelectric plants when the other source of power is not available for example the solar power or wind power etc so we can divert the power suitably and also economically so that is one big advantage of the what uh, big advantage of uh, I think, uh, yeah I've talked about it the five national grid etc as you can read it then yeah secured and reliable power supply as I was talking about then uh, you may be aware everything in the world needs maintenance let it be the human body or any gadget everything needs maintenance and so every power plant 
need some maintenance. And when the maintenance work, uh, sometimes the scheduled maintenance work is taken up, we may have to shut down the power plant. And uh, that means it is not able to supply the power to the grid. Under this condition, what happens? Again, the power to the grid is supplied by the other generating stations and the power is not interrupted to any consumer. Now, when we have very large grid, that means when the total power generating capacity of the total grid is very large, the magnitude of the reserve capacity needed would be much uh, uh, smaller uh, compared to if we had, uh, I mean, proportionately, the magnitude of the um, reserve capacity which is used when some plant is under maintenance or some plant is uh, out of service uh, would be larger proportionately for a smaller system as compared to the larger system. And the grid has advantage of having a very large power handling system. So the uh, percentage wise, the reserve capacity required for meeting the unforeseen situation or even the scheduled maintenance situation becomes much smaller. Well, that is a big saving in the uh, cost of supplying the power. And again, uh, it is said the uh, uh, ability to install larger unit size, the uh, the size of the of a single unit supplying power is uh, in practical sense it is said that between 5 to 10 percent of the total power handling capability of the system now when we have power grid the total power handling capability is very very large in that case we can install larger single unit sizes and the larger is the unit size size more economical is the power generation for example if you generate power with three 200 megawatt generators and with one uh, 650 megawatt generator the total capacity is the same three times 200 and 650 megawatt single unit. The power generation by the single unit of 650 megawatt would work out to be much economical. So it is desirable to install larger unit sizes, but the larger unit size, if it goes out of the circuit, the whole system gets such a jolt that it may not be able to withstand with the supply of power to the consumer. But when the total handling capability of the grid increases, we can also install larger unit. And that is why the single large, largest unit should be something between 5 to 10 percent of the total power handling capability of the system. So that also increases. Another very important thing in power supply is you must have noticed sometimes that in the evening hours the voltage goes down. Why does it go down? Because in the evening hour the load to the total system increases considerably. And uh, when the load increases the generating capability has to be increased too. And when it lacks 
that means the load is increasing and the generating capacity is not increasing the um, power supply quality that is one thing voltage and frequency also goes down under that condition it would be advisable to have uh, some uh, to put i mean to start generation of power uh, through different sources under the peak load conditions and there we take help with the hydroelectric power plants where the hydroelectric plants take because the hydroelectric plants take only three minutes three to four minutes maybe when we open the gates start running the um, uh, uh, turbine and synchronize it to the grid that takes such a short time unlike the thermal power stations which take hours and hours 10 to 12 hours minimum because you have to have the rated temperature of the uh, of the steam superheated steam etc and that takes very long time so now at the to meet the peak load which rises very quickly in the evening hours uh, when uh, the best solution is to start new hydro generating uh, generating plants and synchronize them to the grid in this process uh, because it takes very less time the uh, the uh, peak load is best met with the hydroelectric plants and hydroelectric plants you can imagine as i mentioned they are located far away from the load wherever the hydro hydroelectric potential is available this is how uh, the grid system again helps in meeting the peak load quickly with the help of diversion of power starting new generating uh, power plants etc so that is another very important advantage of the uh, power uh, uh, I mean power grid power grid system so as I mentioned we have the uh, uh, national power grid which is taking care to bring power of the best possible quality to you all throughout 365 days a year and from years to years I was mentioning what is the need as you can see in this slide what is the need for high voltage uh, on for uh, in power systems the as you can see three phase power you must have learned in the power system courses that three phase power is given by a very simple uh, equation root 3 v line i line cos phi uh, the line to line voltage line current and the cos phi if you take let's um, for the sake of uh, quick solution if we let's take the cos phi that is the power factor ideal power factor let's say one uh, which is not practical but it may be ideal okay so the uh, the in that case the uh, power the power uh, uh, when you calculate becomes three phase power you can calculate uh, v square or v line square by zc cos phi and cos phi taking one the and mm, another very important thing the impedance as you see on this slide the impedance has been taken to be 250 between 250 and 350 ohms that is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line the you can see the characteristic impedance of the transmission lines varies between 250 to 350 ohms for the majority of the transmission lines 
And when we come to this equation, the three phase power is equal to V line square divided by Zc and cos phi is 1. The power is proportional to the square of the line voltage, line to line voltage, V, v line. That means if you power handling capability is proportional to the square of the voltage. If you want to increase the power uh, handled by a transmission line and in, uh, increase the voltage, the power handling capability will increase tremendously. So, uh, it is not desirable to increase the uh, current, line current, because the I square R losses, that is the uh, which get converted to heat in the conductor, which are not desirable. And there's a power loss also, a tremendous power loss. The transmission lines have got a very high uh, efficiency. If we had increased the current instead of voltage, you can imagine I square R loss is the real power loss. So the efficiency of the transmission lines would have gone down like anything. So it is not desirable to have uh, uh, to increase the current, but if we increase the voltage, we can increase the power handling capability of any three phase system. And this is true with not just transmission line, this is true with uh, all uh, electrical uh, installations and gadgets like generators, like uh, transformers, etc. So we to, to be able to handle larger amount of power, the voltage, higher voltage is required. That must be taken care of. Yeah, uh, and the equipment, equipment efficiency slide is there. Uh, you can see the uh, large generators have got a efficiency to the order of 95% electrical. I'm talking about the electrical efficiency. I'm not talking about the thermal or the energy conversion efficiency, only electrical efficiency. Uh, then the, mm, sometimes you might have heard that the power supply system is very, uh, is having tremendous losses. And those losses are actually not the electrical losses, but the power theft, which unfortunately are clubbed with the power system efficiency. And in our country, unfortunately, power theft is not a new thing, it's a very common thing. And that must be checked, and that should not be included in the electrical installation efficiencies. That is a I mean, wrong interpretation of uh, the hard work done by the electrical engineers, I would say. Yeah, of course, the as I just mentioned, the efficiency of the fossil fuel and thermal power generating stations uh, is, um, it used to be around 30%, it has been increased to 40% uh, gradually. Uh, and the efficiency of hydropower stations is obviously much uh, more because there, there are not uh, much losses there. But even the transformers have got uh, uh, very high efficiency. Motors, transformers, generators to the tune of 95%. Yeah. The level of voltages. As you can see, people have classified low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage. High voltage is classified with 115 to 220 kV. Extra high voltage, 345, 400, and 500 kV. And ultra high voltage. 765, 1100, and 1200 
uh, level, uh, 1150 or 1200 level. But I simply do not agree with this classification. In fact, you must have known and read near your house or near your uh, nearest substation uh, danger, 440 volts. Ha danger, high voltage, 440 volts. Even the 440 volts three phase system is dangerous and considered to be high voltage. So everything is high voltage and classifying this, uh, the range, medium, high and extra and all, this is very confusing and this is not followed uniformly all over the world. So it would be advisable to mention the level of voltage and everything is high voltage instead classifying it extra and um, ultra etc. So this classification is unwarranted for I would call it to be and uh, yeah, because even 440 volt is considered to be high voltage and equally dangerous to the living being. Then let's go to the next slide. Yeah, rated voltages and uh, frequencies in power system. In the, uh, the consumer voltage level, the consumer voltage level, we we can uh, uh, we know uh, the single phase consumer voltage level is 230 volts as I was mentioning, but in some countries like the United States and Japan, uh, they have taken over, uh, they have designed their system to have the consumer voltage level, single phase consumer voltage level at 120 volts only. The only advantage what I consider for having 120 not 230 volts is the safety of the voltage and with the modern gadgets uh, and tripping devices even 230 volts is as safe as 120 and this is single phase voltage is always uh, between a phase and the neutral voltage this is not line to line voltage line to line voltage would will be divided multiplied by root 3 that is that will work out to be about 410 20 volts so the system is also called 440 volt system and the system single phase voltage uh, 230 volts between line and the neutral <coughs> there have been uh, in the distribution systems as you can re read uh, the 230 volt three phase system in the United States or Japan 400 volt or 410 volt uh, distribution three phase distribution system in, in uh, uh, our country or in most of the countries in the world they follow uh, the, the consumer voltage to be single phase consumer voltage to be 30 volts. Then earlier, the power was distributed uh, at 3.3, 6.6, and also at 11 kV level. And these uh, voltage levels slowly have been phased out because you can imagine the power handling capability depends upon the total, uh, the power handling capability depends upon the uh, uh, is proportional to the square of the voltage. So 3.3 kV system and uh, 11 kV um, or 6.6 .6 kV system would handle very less amount of power and the load is continuously increasing. So 11 kV is one of the standard of the uh, power distribution level and then 33 kV and also uh, you can say um, uh, yeah, yeah, 33 kV uh, is also a distribution level and which can also transmit the power to short distances. 
we have another uh, standard uh, system of uh, high voltage distribution of power you can say adopted by the, uh, the railways practically all over the world it is being adopted at 25 kV single phase AC voltage and uh, in the uh, electric traction system you might have observed while traveling with the uh, train that every 40 kilometers there is a uh, substation which supplies the power to all the locomotives in that uh, in that range of 40 kilometers 20 kilometers on either side of the substation this substation actually converts two phase 132 kV into single phase 25 kV uh, system. So the transformers installed at these substations of electric traction are actually two phase 132 kV trans uh, kV uh, step down to single phase 25 kV system because the traction uh, locomotive gets the power at single phase. This leads to kind of an unbalanced system of distribution. You might have also observed uh, when you travel with electrified uh, train, uh, electrified uh, track, you can say that there is a same dimension transmission line which also runs along with you on either side uh, of the track and that is nothing but C phase 132 kV line which is laid specifically to uh, supply power to the electric traction system. Yeah. Now uh, we we did uh, talk about initially the uh, so sy system of generation level, the rated voltages at the generation level. Three phase generators, are, as I you may have three phase four forty volt generator, three point three kV, six point six kV. Uh, these are all small generators. When we go to the large generators, that is uh, the that 110 and uh, 220 megawatt power generation. We are, one thing, the generators what we are talking about are nothing but synchronous machines, synchronous generators. Synchronous machine, as we understand, is uh, we have been understanding the things are changing. Synchronous machines have one synchronous speed, and the synchronous machine can be used either as a generator or as a motor. So, the, such uh, synchronous machines, which have total power rating up to the tune of 110 to 220 megawatt, generate power at 11 kV, whereas uh, when we go to the Larger generator, as I said, are desirable. 500 and 650 megawatt generators, the power is generated at 20, 21.5, you can say 22 at 22k level. And still larger but rare, 1000 megawatt generators have their rated power uh, to the tune. Uh, rated power generation uh, voltage level to the tune of 33 kV. That is, it is difficult to have to or to provide insulation within the windings of the generator for higher voltages, and that limits the voltage level at which the power is generated in the power in the power generating machines or synchronous generators. 
Then, uh, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, from 11 kV to 440 volts or 33 kV to 11, 11 kV and 66 kV to 33 kV are the uh, steps at which the power distribution takes place. And ultimately, the consumption is either three phase 400 volts or the single phase 230 volt. Yeah, you would uh, wonder why these are multiple of 11. Uh, 11, 33, uh, or even uh, that is why we have been calling it to be 440 volts and not, not necessarily 400 volts. So multiple of 11, 66, 33, uh, and also we have been talking about 220 volts, 110 volts, uh, sorry, 220 kV, 110 kV, etc. Multiple of 33 kV. In fact, the multiple of 33 kV is the system initiated by the British and we have also followed that system in our country. But you would be uh, surprised to know in, uh, for example, in Germany, the system is 400 uh, volt, that is not 440 volt, 400 volt, uh, 3 kV, 6 kV instead of 6.6 .6 or 3.3 kV, etc. as you can see. So, I mean, uh, multiple of 10, not multiple of 11. So this question I've been asked very often that why this uh, multiple of 11 is uh, considered to be standard in our country, but it is not that it must be uh, followed all throughout. Okay, I for today, uh, let's close uh, our meeting. Uh, I'll be seeing you tomorrow with some new uh, contents. Okay. Thank you very much.